On a day when we reflect on the year behind us, the veteran story serves as a reminder to be grateful for the days we have. Every year, Walter Dixon celebrates the day he died. News 4's Emily Pritchard shares his incredible journey back from the grave. Spotlight on those who served. Brought to you by Graybar. This 90-year-old loves nothing more. I go on a road ride every day. Than a drive along a country Missouri road. Some of my friends, some of the girls. Maybe that's because this veteran knows what it's like to not have the freedom of two hands on the wheel. I just enjoy life. Over there. And Walter Dixon and knows a back, thing or two about I dying. Sure. That's uh, 5, 18, 51. That's when I died. Dixon's final resting place is marked at a cemetery in Korea. He's got copies of his obituary. Normally. It's just a day that uh, I prefer to celebrate if I'm around. This Army veteran from Waynesville, Missouri, is very much alive to tell a story. It all began when he married a young woman named Agnes in 1950. But the newlyweds only had a short time together. Just months later, he shipped off to war. Korea, May of 1951. Dixon won some money in a poker game and needed a money order signed so he could send it home to his wife. So he marched up to a group of fellow soldiers. A bomb hit right in where they were. Well, I took my jacket off and wrapped around this guy's legs because they were really bunged up. But this is the message his family got back in Missouri, signed by President Harry Truman. Oh, I was reported killed in action, and uh, but I wasn't dead yet. I was captured, but they, uh, I was, they thought that was me in that hole because my jacket was there, and these letters from my wife was in the jacket. Killed in action splashed across headlines in his southeast Missouri hometown. But an ocean away, Dixon was fighting to survive. We got hungry and we got uh, kind of starved in a lot of cases. He spent nearly 28 months as a prisoner of war. We had several things that uh, was not real good, but you have to handle them. In 1953, Dixon was released by his captors. He returned to the U.S., but his family, waiting to greet him, didn't look the same. She had remarried and had a kid. Thinking he'd been killed in war, his wife Agnes moved on. Captions across the country read, GI husband alive and she's remarried. I said, heck, I don't think that was the word I used, but I better not say that right now. After all his sacrifices, his heart took a risk with a familiar byline. She wrote my obituary. Dee Fenton worked at the local paper and typed these sentences when Dixon was declared dead in 1951. Somebody had to write it and she was the one that knew him. Dixon was Dee's next door neighbor growing up. They rekindled their relationship after she drafted that obituary and he returned. I went home to visit one time and I got a date with her and we kind of got together. They married in 1955. She always joked about writing his obituary again. Russell Dixon is one of their three children. Every five years they renewed their vows. Those vows stayed true through 61 years of marriage until Dee passed away in 2016. She, she's a pretty good lady. Of course she was awful lucky to have me. <laughs> Walter Dixon still lives here in Waynesville, Missouri. He has been awarded seven Purple Hearts and two Bronze Stars. This October, Dixon celebrated his very real nine decades of living. Yeah, I celebrate every day, so why not? If anyone has direction on how to make the most out of the time you have, it just might be someone who's returned from the grave. Enjoy every day. And if you don't enjoy every day, you've done something wrong. Emily Pritchard, News 4.